Base, I found one of your men. It looks like he blew himself up with a grenade. There are no signs of a firefight or any other evidence of him being attacked. Kowalski here. Roger that, Major. Hey, I got good news. We finally acquired the exact coordinates of the source of interference. The signal is coming from the kindergarten building. Is that really you? Well, I'll be. We were starting to think we'd never see our dock again. So what happened? Well, it's a long story. I'll tell you another time. Okay.
Thanks for your help. By the way, the Colonel wants you to pay him a visit. Thanks. I'll do that. Also, Gary headed for Yanov's station to restock. He asked me to tell you that he won't be back for a few days. Gotcha. So, tell me, where were you? You're not going to believe me anyway, but in a fridge. I spoke to the HQ commander and reported the situation to him along with all the information that's been collected. There won't be any helicopter support for a while. He suggested that we fortify our position and await further orders. USS observers are currently at the HQ, so you'll be able to talk to your superiors soon enough. Colonel, a radio signal has been detected, and its source is not far from the base. The transmission is encrypted, and I haven't been able to crack it yet. Do you have the coordinates? Yes. I have the coordinates, but the signal is intermittent, and it's moving. Monolith again? I'll check. Strelok. You're the stalker who disabled the Scorcher? Yes, but my plan didn't work. I came here to speak with your commanders. I have information that will allow the army to take control of the zone and destroy it. And the mission is starting. Come, let's talk inside.
We've got a problem. Our choppers are crashing for reasons that we've not understood yet. Until we work it out, there won't be any helicopter support. The only way to get to the borders of the zone is on foot. The reasons are obvious. There are many anomalies in the air, especially in the center of the zone. We had a map with the safe air corridor between anomalies, and the helicopters had emission protection systems. That's odd. You're telling me you haven't noticed that anomalies move around after an emission. Some disappear, and new ones show up in different places, which makes your map of anomalies effectively useless. So that's what it is. What? Emissions don't just follow one another. If you can scan the area and identify all the anomalies, the choppers will be able to collect us safely, provided they're dispatched right after an emission. We must inform the HQ of this as soon as possible. I'll contact my commanders right after the emission. Lieutenant, get him on the line as soon as you can. Contact HQ. Roger. HQ on the line. Carlo, why did comms go down? Because of the emission. It's impossible to establish comms during one. Okay. All right, listen up. Operation Fairway is being taken over by the USS. 
Is Major Dick part of that? Yes. Okay. He's in command from now on. Tell him to stay put. To be contacted by his superior shortly. Roger. Major, do you read me? Major Degtyrev here. I read you. Good. As of this moment, you are responsible for completing Operation Fairway. Kowalski and the Stingray Squad will assist you. Report. I've managed to acquire documents about experiments carried out in the zone. Furthermore, we've been contacted by a stalker who's been in the CNPP. His name is Strelok, and he's offered us his cooperation. Roger. Accept his offer. You know what caused our helicopters to crash? Yes, I have the data, and Strelok's information confirms it. The helicopters were hit by anomalies after their locations changed during the emission. The anomaly map issued to the pilots turned out to be useless. Good. That means we have until the next emission. We'll be collected together with the stalker from position B-28. Stingray squad will be evacuated with you. The birds are already in the air. Over and out. You heard the news, fellas. When we go, stick together and keep the stalker alive. Any questions? Get ready to move. Major, can I have a word? Move out, squad. Zombies in the building. We've got to move fast! More zombies. Through the arch! Stay 
stay alert and follow orders. We're real close to the evacuation point. Let's move! What's that? Don't stop. Keep moving. It's here. Run. Huh? Okay. Run.
Major the Tyrant, we're ready to go! Get in that shopper. I hope it was worth it. As a reward for successfully completing his investigation, Diktyrev was offered a promotion to Colonel and the position of Mission Coordinator. He declined the opportunity to work at the HQ and submitted a personal request to be sent to the Zone as the USS Permanent Observer. The information about the development of psi devices obtained by Diktyrev alerted USS commanders. All the information gathered on ex-designated laboratories was removed from military archives and filed as top secret. All personnel working in the zone were ordered to prevent the disclosure of information about the laboratories at any cost. Several experimental samples were made on the basis of technical documents for item 62. Following a set of test trials, it was decided not to go ahead with large-scale deployment of the weapon due to the high cost of ammunition. Nonetheless, it would be reasonable to assume that further development of the Gauss rifle is ongoing. Sultan and his gang left the Skadask to do their shady business elsewhere after their attempts to capture the ship failed. The ensuing feeling of relative safety among stalkers led to a massive increase in the number of artifacts sold to Beard, causing his business to boom, while the formerly quiet Skadavsk bar became as popular as the famous 100 Rads bar, despite being almost in the center of the zone. Following the destruction of the Bloodsucker Lair, it's unlikely that anything could significantly change the state of affairs on the Skadovsk. The old ship became a temporary center of stability in the ever-changing world that is the Zone. A fragile balance was reached between Freedom and Duty squads at Yanov Station. Tired of the endless struggle, fighters of both factions started leaving their squads and joining the Free Stalkers. The scientific expedition, organized by professors Herman and Ozersky, was a success. The data they collected facilitated the development of groundbreaking medicine and technology, which prompted the Ministry of Education to allocate additional funding for researching the zone. Gary's stories about the Army's fate scared stalkers away from Pripyat. The few who dared to venture into the city ran into inexplicable phenomena, which added further dark strokes to an already gloomy picture of the dead city. The legend of the Oasis stopped being a legend. The identity of those who managed to find a way to the secret anomaly became an increasingly regular topic of conversation among stalkers. Despite this, the number of adventurers trying to find it remained high something the bandits were quick to take advantage of, with constant offers to lead stalkers to the oasis, which usually ended in muggings at a safe distance from stalker camps. The area around Yanov Station continues to attract growing numbers of stalkers. The lack of dangerous mutants and abundance of anomalous areas have led to the area being referred to as a treasure trove with increasing regularity. The rumors of Zulu's fate reached the leader of duty, General Veronin. Counter to most expectations, Veronin decided to posthumously award Zulu with the Silver Shield, duty's highest decoration. 
Vano headed off to the freedom-controlled military warehouses, where his cheerful personality and optimism quickly earned him the popularity they merited. Ultimately, he took charge of a small group of researchers involved in investigating anomalous areas. Senior Lieutenant Sokolov continued to take part in flying missions over the zone. During one such recon flight over Lamansk, his aircraft was shot down by mercenaries. Two weeks later, he was picked up by a patrol near the cordon. Within a month of his rescue, Sokolov had left the Air Force, joining a civil airline instead. A group of stalkers was forced to seek shelter on Noah's old barge during a particularly powerful emission. When the barge was attacked by a horde of snorks afterwards, stalkers were forced to concede that the barge was as good a defense against mutants as anything they'd seen. Even more astonishing was a litter of pseudo-dog puppies that Noah himself led into battle against the snorks. Having found out about his friend's fates, Carden gave up dreams of a stalker career. Having overcome his alcoholism, he moved to Yanov, where he partnered up with Nitro to set up a full-service repair shop. Both technicians gladly devote all their spare time to building a vehicle that could operate in the zone. Strelok passed on the information he obtained on his trip to the Chernobyl NPP to the USS commanders. This prompted the government to create a scientific institute for research of the Chernobyl anomalous area. Strelok took up the position of chief scientific consultant to the institute. Colonel Kowalski, commander of the Stingray Group, found his resting place not far from the majority of his squad. Their bodies were taken in by the zone with nothing but old faded photographs left to remind the country of their sacrifice. Повторяет 